Hello everyone. Hope you're doing well and you have your tea or coffee or whatever beverage you can muster up in your hands and ready to have a nice relaxing discussions conversation about things that might be on your mind. The things to do with relationships, breakups, things to do with thoughts, consciousness, fears, desires and ego and how they act and react and interact <laughs> and their role in the way that we roll on our daily life and negotiate our path towards completing and continuing a pleasant journey that we are all on our life. So let me know where you are saying hello and where you're tuning in from. <laughs> Hello, Sonia Jun. <laughs> Good to see you here. I made such a interesting concoction today. <laughs> I wonder if you guys dare to guess what this drink is all about. As simple as it is but that's how it looks that's my help to let you know how it looks but yeah. Sandra hello dear don't forget to let me know which part of the world you're tuning in from like Sandra from <laughs> Fekete from Hungary. Ah, there we go. Fekete. This name sounds like if it's the first time you're here with us. I'm glad you're here, unless I am I have forgotten. Sonia said this pomegranate juice. No, same color, but. No, it's it's a warm, it's a hot drink. It's it's uh, it's in made with hot water. <laughs> I like it. Trabzon, Denizli, Salam. <laughs> Where from? Where from, dear? <laughs> so, if we have enough people while we're saying hello, you guys can... Hello, Prince. How are you? I missed you here. I didn't notice you. Yesterday, what happened to you? You, weren't, you were usually one of the first ones. <laughs> and Raju from thank you dear I'm fine don't forget to let me know where you're tuning in so I know kind of where and how far I'm reaching Sandra says currently in Reno oh Nevada is it for my son's basketball term oh wow nice is your son in high school or elementary school. <laughs> Boys, watch and learn. <laughs> Arpit says, ah, good, from India. Excellent. Sonia, from London. Yes, now I'm Aziz. As this is a Roselle drink. What is that drink? I don't know what that drink is. Um, this is not alcoholic drink. This is, <laughs> this is uh, just very good for you drink. Sotherin from Cambodia. Hello dear, welcome. Raju says, why is the future 
unknowable, unknowable. Okay, we'll get to that. Sandra says he's in fifth grade. Aha, okay, good, good. My son also played basketball in his elementary school. Um, but then he chose to play tennis in high school. And then in college, he was weightlifting. And after college, he did serious powerlifting. All natural, without any um, substance abuse of any kind. Very focused and for me it was wow what a what a thing that I've never been involved in that echelon of serious uh, training uh, lifting cars and pulling fire trucks and these big round stones that I would only see them on television say wow now then I was watching my own son do it just <laughs> freaking out of my mind <laughs> but I had to keep composure <laughs> <laughs> so it is very exciting to see your children, the favorite people in the world, to a parent, excel in what he or she likes to do. So have a great fun and time. Sonia said cranberry tea. No. <laughs> Kasaba from Hungary. Hello, dear. So if we are done with guessing what my drink is, we can then get on with some questions that we can discuss. Wow, this is pretty warm today. I have the opportunity to overlook the pool in my complex and I can see people are already enjoying themselves. And uh, it's getting warm. So. Ah, hello, Don. Don Diego. Hello, dear. Arpit says, where are you heading for? Heading for? I'm not heading for anywhere. I'm here. I'm here with you guys <laughs> for the next hour. So what made you think that am I, do I look like walking from the other end? Am I walking? I can see myself just sitting and having my drink. <laughs> Okay, somebody remind me at the end of our uh, session today to tell you what this drink is. In the meantime, uh, let's look at some questions that you may have had in your mind. First of all, I wish you've had a nice week, past week. You've dealt with things you wanted to deal. You've been productive the way you want it to be. And you've been taking good care of yourselves, your health, what you eat, what you drink, how much you sleep, is a very important. Our entity, as you know, is made in two parts, mind and the body, and each have their own rule. You've got to take care of your body by presenting it in comfort, proper sustenance, good clean drink, water, and proper sleep. Because sleep is the part that is both for the body and the mind. Because when you sleep, your body rejuvenates and your mind attracts and absorbs the energy of the universe. So that's why when you get up in the morning, you're vigorous and ready to go. And even if you don't do a thing and sit on the couch and watch TV all day, you still deplete a certain energy, you feel exhausted. That's because all through the day, you're using certain energy. And that energy is what you receive when you sleep. So sleep is good for both recuperation of the body and receiving the energy from the nature. So it's very important how you take good care of yourselves and I hope you do that. Now, we have here Aziz's hibiscus. No. <laughs> Until this morning, I even didn't know what it's going to be. I just thought it through. I mean, thought it up. Raju says, why you read only names of who comments here but what about answers oh I will I will because we were just saying greetings so we are not we are spending we're living we're saying hello just like saying why don't you offer sweets and food 
when the guests arrive because that's the door. It's supposed to shake hand, hug, kiss, say hello, come on in, have a seat. So that's why. Then we answer the questions as well. <laughs> so, Raju, you're, you're uh, high strung today. What's going on? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Sutirin says, what time is the best time to sleep, sir? Right now, here is 2 a.m. in Cambodia. Well, you should have been fast asleep at least four hours ago. Well, you know, they say the best time, uh, depending on where you are, is the time that you could have your body reciprocate the flow of nature. The oceans usually have the low tide and high tide. And so it is important for you, as we are 80% water, we also comply to that sort of effect of the gravity of the moon on the earth and on waters around the world. So we also get affected. So best time to sleep would be perfectly, would be 10 to 6, I would say, is a great thing, or 10 to 7, or 11 to 7, 11 to 6. I would not want to sleep later than 10 or 11. Mind you, I do. I'm not saying that I uh, do it right. But the answer to that question, in my opinion, is that. So, Arpit says, what this best thing, what this best thing that inspires you every day? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, that's another good question. And Edwin says, why everyone like this? I don't know, like what? So, now let's go back to the Jew that asked. Yes, yes, Raju. Raju, you're, you're so serious today. Ease up. We're going to get to your question. <laughs> I'm looking for it now. The first question came from Raju. And he said, why is the future unknowable? To a degree is unknown, but from one angle, in a way, in certain things, it is known. What do I mean? Well, it is unknown because if you think of life, as a river that comes uh, from the mountain top, flows, sources mountain top, and let's say on your left is the mountain top, comes towards you, and the river passes in front of you, and then continues to the right side, downhill to the right. The part that is to the right is the part that the water of the river has already flown by you. That's the part that you cannot reach. It's already done. It's already gone. You cannot do anything with it. You cannot change it. You cannot reach it. You cannot interact with it. It's gone. That's the past in life. We're just using a metaphor. The part that is coming towards you haven't arrived at that water yet. You can't reach it, you can't touch it, you can't interact with it, you can't know what's in it, you can't see what's, what it's bringing. That's the future. It hasn't come yet. So that's why it hasn't arrived and you won't know it. The part that is passing by you in front of your feet, that's the only part that you can put your feet in, put your hand in, pick up something, see what's in it, light shines on it properly and you have a great control and vision on what it is and interact with it. You can jump into it and pick up something from it or throw something in it. And that's your now, your present. And that's why the one that is past, you can't reach it as the past, gone. The one that hasn't arrived, you can't reach it, you can't interact with it. That's the future, hasn't arrived yet. So therefore, it's unknown what it pertains, what it includes, what's what it is bringing with itself, what it entails. So that's one reason. But the part that I said that you kind of know, 
is because the now is encompassing the past. You're here, the now is because of how you interacted, reacted, lived, did the result of the past, your past. And then now, what you do now, the actions you make, the way you live, the things you do, is actually the present of your future. So today, now, is the past of your future and is the future of your past. So everything that you do and it will be happening would be based on today, now, which is the past of future. That's how you are now the result of your past, what was in the past. That's how you are where you are. The same thing happens. Your future, today it's its past, is based on what you do today. So in a way, your future is kind of known, depending on how you live and what you do, how you behave, and decisions you make today. That's pretty much how I could answer that question. <clears throat> yes, Sotirvin, that's right, you should be sleeping. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Arpit says, what this best thing that inspires you every day? Honestly, what inspires me just to become a little better person, wiser, to know my way around a little bit better, to be able to handle the interaction between my thoughts and consciousness, fears and egos and desire, to bring balance to myself. That's a very important project of every day that one can have and to be focused and pay full attention to it so we can better ourselves and become wiser and learn how to live a little bit better by knowing this knowledge about how we function, how we tick. But what's really inspiring is to focus on what wonders awaits us in this short journey of life and for that to get up and open your eyes and be able to have the opportunity to pursue what you're hoping to achieve in this life. You have another day, another chance, another possibilities, another way to, another chance to continue your hopes to achieve certain things, to accomplish certain things, to get more knowledge in certain ways maybe to produce something, to invent something, to help someone, to help yourself, become closer to the nature, learn about this energy that binds us, surrounds us. All of these are aspirations and inspirations that you can have. The fact that you grow, you get up and you can breathe, you have something to eat and pleasure of something nice to drink. and hopeful to see your loved ones, see how uh, they are growing and how they're dealing with their lives. These are all available to everybody, to some more difficulty, to some easier. But these are really what should be the roots of aspiration and inspirations. Otherwise, if you wait for something big to happen to make you happy, that's going to be happening maybe once a year or once every few years. That's not enough. Happiness should be as much as possible based on simple things. Now, I hope that is something for you to think about. Raju says, why do we dream? I'm really upset with that. Really, I'm sorry that you're upset. Uh, why are you upset? It was for my unborn... Oh, I see the kind of dream that you had. It was for my unborn child. It was very horrible. 
No, is it true? No, of course not. Often you dream because of the things that you were thinking about during the day and it it has a it, it leaves a print um, a signature on your consciousness. Then when your mind is very quiet, every picture or everything that it had a influence on your consciousness, it becomes clear, surfaces. And on that basis you may dream about what was occupying your mind during the day. But also you may dream because of your fears. The things that you most hate and afraid of occupies your mind as a transient thought. And that transient thought comes to you when the mind is totally calm and on its surface everything is reflected, including the thoughts and the fears that you had the day or a while before. So no, not at all. A dream is not something that you can count on that is going to be true. No, it's a dream. Most often it's just bullshit, just reflection of a fear, nothing else. Hello, Carrie. Good to see you. Happy Sunday to you too as well. To you too as well. It couldn't be more grammatically wrong than that. <laughs> Boy, this drink gets better and better the longer it sits. So, what else do we have here? That's it? So we should now go home? No more questions? <laughs> Hello, Piscean. Good to see you. So I'll, I await a fresh question because we have run out. We have answered everything that we... Let's see if I have. See me says, how can a person be a good realtor? <laughs> well, it depends on what good means to you. To some people, good means to make more money, which is not necessarily true because if money would be your motivation, and you're not strong enough, you don't have serious um, core beliefs and standards and policies and beliefs, how to navigate your morals and manners, then you may jeopardize your core beliefs and standards and give in to not being as you should be and just for the sake of making money. That's jeopardizing you as a human being, the quality of your person for material things, which you should never happen. Because you're more important, more valuable than any amount of money. Your whole persona, the way you treat people, the way you treat yourself, what you become in pursuit of that money is what's important. You know, it's not important to get the gold. What you become in pursuit of the gold is important. You may go and get the gold, but maybe you robbed the bank. So you got the gold, but you became a thief, a robber. So really, it's not about the money that you get. It's about how you get that money, how clear, honest, and honorable it is. So it is true for everything, including being a realtor. To me, good realtor is the one who simply is very honest, and considers and is committed to bringing about all the knowledge and facts that he can muster up for a property to bring about what his, his or her client is asking for and looking for. Be honest about all the facts, bring the facts, search them. If it needs to go, go to the city hall and find the you know, uh, rules and regulations and facts and 
backgrounds of that property and disclose it to his or her client and do his best to protect the client's interest and put the client ahead of his own interest. And that will go a long way because his reputation would be built. He feels good about himself because he's done his job right. And as a realtor, you're supposed to be protecting the interest of your client, not thinking about the money you receive. Because if you do protect the interest of your client and find and do the best service and bring about what the client is looking for in an honest and good, clear way, the money will follow. So to me, good is equal to good quality of work, honesty, clarity, honor, and that's pretty much sums it up. <clears throat> Sonia says, <clears throat> you're welcome, Raju. Sonia says, I get flashbacks from the past. How to deal with it? There is a video on my YouTube channel, which the link of the YouTube channel is up there. There's about 510 or 11 videos I have on that, which is focused on different scenarios in a relationship, in a breakup, what things you feel after a breakup, and how you deal with it. And a few of them are about this flashback. And I don't really remember what I said in them because it was a while ago I think I made it. But right now if I wanted to answer that question, you got to consider a flashback has no truth to it. There's no actuality to it. It's a memory. A memory, when you think of it, you see those pictures with the pictures that you see in your consciousness as a memory, you remember there is a hidden file that along with the picture file comes up with it and that is the emotional file and that emotional file makes you react also feel what you felt then because that emotional file is still also in your memory when you bring the pictures up there's an emotional file as a reaction comes with it and when you feel that emotion that moment you think because that emotion is real, you're feeling it that moment, you think the actual thing is happening again. Then you go berserk and you become uncomfortable. But if you constantly remind yourself that this is a rerun of a movie, it's not a theater that is taking place right now, it's not live, it's just a rerun of a movie and you remind yourself that it's not happening, it's dead, it's gone, I don't have to worry about it, that flashback means nothing and it's not non is, is non-existent, then you will have an easier time to deal with it because you're clear that this is not actual. It's a dead memory. It's got no life to it. And it's past, it's gone. I don't have to worry about it. So it wouldn't bother you as much. But take a look at the, you know, uh, the video channel and you may find a lot more discussions on this topic. Mel Z says, how can one put himself in a state of mind that is best suited to mentally connect with the spirits of loved ones who passed before us? Mel Z, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> I have no idea how that's done as much as it's interesting. All I can tell you is that when you get into state of meditation you will create a mind with infinitely decreasing ripples and when the mind is calm and quiet uh, things reflect much more clear on it which could be the beginning of ability beyond what we normally have that's all I can say Patricio <clears throat> hello dear All right. Looks like we have 
caught up with all the questions. Arpit says, how do you think it's easy? How do you think it's easy to be in such a love in which you don't get love in return? It's not easy. And if you're not <clears throat> receiving, you're not reciprocated with the love that you're offering, take your cue. That person that you're pouring that love is not qualified to receive your love. Unless it is a love for your children, which is they're in the process of growing up. So you love them and show them how to be loved and how to extend love by you loving them. Caring, selfishness, unselfishness, showing them selfishness is not good by your example, by being unselfish, and they will learn. But if it's a romantic relationship between you and your girlfriend, or, you know, it's a couple, and you don't get reciprocated with the feelings and emotion and love that you offer, walk away. There's so many wonderful people all in the world and you can bond with them and you know find things in common and fall in love and pursue a good healthy relationship so it just because something is difficult it doesn't mean you know something you want and you wish for but it's not happening and you can see it's not healthy for you and it's not pleasant for you why do you still in there what for? What? Move on. Find someone who appreciates you. Yeah? Welcome, Arpit. <clears throat> We're totally... There we go. Pisin says, Sir, law of attraction I want to know about, please. Sonia says, don't forget to tell us about the drink. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Don Diego says, how do you overcome anxiety when you're going to do something that has a possibility of failure? Everything has a possibility of failure. <laughs> I can't think of too many things that have no possibility of failure. Failure is part of the equation. You know, anything you do pretty much could go exactly the way you want somewhat the way you want, not at all, or with some trouble. So failure is part of success. If, uh, if you don't, sometimes you may have to walk back a little bit, regroup, redirect, and go from a different direction. You know, when you're trying to go somewhere and you see a big puddle of garbage or deep hole in the ground, what do you do? Is it failure that you came to it? Yeah, but that failure means you go back and we choose a different path and continue. So that failure caused you to redirect and correct the path to, for a safer journey and successful one. So failure is a part of the success. It's an equation that is part of the success. Every failure has a bit of success in it for a future um, for continuation of um, what you're hoping to achieve. And Pisces says, Law of Attraction. I want to know about it, please. Law of Attraction basically could be 
simplified by saying your determination and perseverance is going to bring about what you're hoping for because by just sitting and thinking and hoping for something nothing will ever happen very seldom maybe a lottery or something but even for that you have to buy the lottery ticket so there's an action here so by persevering and focusing on what you want to do and planning for it and then taking action for it <clears throat> these are all what really brings that meaning focus on finding a way to achieve what you want to achieve all that creates a certain kind of a blueprint in your mind a pathway opens you're focusing on it finding the way your intention turns into action and the action brings the reaction which in this case would be the result that you're hoping for so basically it's all about focusing on what you want visualizing on what you want believing in what you want and then preparing for getting that what you want in the proper ways and planning for it and then taking action and then getting it it's not just you know I want something I want I want I want and it should be coming there pretty much in other words anything you want put your mind to it prepare for it you can get it if you think positive about it send your thoughts through it extend your energy for it and you focus on it then you will actually be finding a pathway in order to follow your dream and do things that is necessary to do in order to reach that stage where you will find what you're looking for or accomplish what you're hoping to accomplish you know it's like you want to win a competition I don't know in horseback riding you got to constantly be training with the horse preparing for it and become one with it you put your mind to it you put your training to it you put your thoughts and time into it and then that is the same as law of attraction because your thoughts is in it your energy is in it your focus is in it your planning is in it and your action and training is also accompanying it to get what you want otherwise it doesn't happen just by wishing for it <clears throat> so Don that simply means just do it if it's a good cause if it's safe if it's something that you you're prepared for it just do it and focus on what you're doing not what if it fails focus on what you're doing not that if it fails so if you want me I can say it again <laughs> focus on what you're doing and your full attention and energy would be on performing and towards what you want to achieve and then anxiety will not have a chance because you're focusing on what you're doing and when you're focusing on what you're doing you're in the now and in the now there is no chance for you to compare what it was what it can be what if it doesn't happen which that creates fear and anxiety so focus on what you're doing focus on the activity and action and the things that you need to be doing that means you are in the present moment and in the present moment is so small because present moment is made out of lots of little small moments and in each of those moments there's not enough room and time to think about something else and create the comparison of thought and time and create worry and anxiety you'll be focusing on what you're trying to do I hope that would tell you something You're welcome, Paisin. So, <clears throat> what is the time that we are here having? I don't want to keep you guys too long on your Sunday. Visualization is as important as action in a question mark Pisin asks visualization is important but without action uh, visualization doesn't go much far so the fact that you're preparing for the action in a proper way that takes your mind and thoughts which includes visualization you visualize and then you gotta prepare and plan for it and put it to action so it is important but uh, without action it won't get anywhere then it would be called magic <laughs> so
So what is the time, guys? Is Prince, are you still there? Are you still in Philippines or are you in the West Coast now? Prince is my timekeeper. <laughs> Ah, okay. <clears throat> we have another 10-15 minutes. Arpit says, so when you will be live again? Oh, on Saturdays, same time, I'm having a live talk usually on my Facebook page, which the link is up there. If you look at it, Mind That Seeks Truth Facebook page. And on Sundays, I usually have a live talk on the amazing things in the world, which is the one that we are on. <clears throat> so, if there are no more questions, guys, we can... There is. Uh, Paisin asks how to control your own thoughts. What do you mean by control? There's lots of questions in that sentence. Are you talking about transient thoughts? The thoughts that you didn't want it to appear, you had nothing to do with it, but appears in your head? Are you talking about not thinking about anything at all? Are you talking about taking your thoughts out of the consciousness? What are you exactly talking about? Because all of that, if you go to my YouTube channel, if you look at the playlist, and you look at the playlist called The Psyche, there are lots of videos, long and short, that addresses thought, how thought is born, consciousness, its relationship with consciousness, perceiving, or the actuality, fears, ego, desire, how they are interrelated, how they affect each other, the watcher and the watched, controller and the controlled, the quality of life is called quality of life, watcher and the watch is one of the videos which I really like. And that will give you, perhaps that is the one you should be watching first. That will give you quite a bit. Yeah, not thinking about something is only happens when you take your thoughts out of your consciousness. And for that, there are different ways. One way is when you meditate. And one way is when you're busy doing something. Because then you're just doing something. It could be even waiting for something. But you don't know that you're waiting. You're just anticipating the next action. And therefore, from the moment that this action ends to anticipation for the next action to begin, your anticipation becomes clear, no thought. Because you don't want to go somewhere else when you're expecting something else happen. So you're waiting for it. That pause, also there is no thoughts in it. But there's also meditation that you can, when you're meditating and you're busy in a certain way of thinking in meditation, that what you're thinking through the meditation is actually taking you out of the consciousness. Where is the field of the known? Where all thoughts stem from? And taking the thought out of the consciousness, that's when there would be no more thoughts. Either because you're busy doing something or you're meditating, you're following certain movement in the very present moment which keeps your mind occupied with something that is not even uh, um, um, cumbersome, but it's enough to not to keep your pl mind pleasantly occupied so you wouldn't be picking up any thoughts from the consciousness. You will be out of the consciousness. Again, in my book, Me, My Psyche and I, if you go on my site, mindthatseekstruth.com, mindthatseekstruth.com, you have an opportunity to take a, take a look at my table of contents of my books and then read a sample chapter of my books. And in Me, My Psyche and I book, there is a chapter talking about how to stop time. And, of course, meditation in detail. And these are all helpful to answer your questions. You know, you can get the ebook; it's very nominal fee, and it's much cheaper than the paper book. And that has all those questions answered. Okay, guys, I think it's time for me to say 
Have a wonderful week. Hope things will sort out for you. Be good to yourself and to the others. And thanks for being here. Uh, and hope to see you guys next week, either on my own Facebook page, Mind That Seeks Truth. The link is up there. Or on the amazing things in the world, which is the Facebook page that we are here. And again, thanks to the good people of Wittyfeed who created this opportunity for us to have a discussion every week. Love you all. Be good to yourself and the others. And talk to you soon. Bye for now. Ah, this is a bunch of cherries squashed in and hot water on top of it. That's it. Bye-bye. <laughs>